Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Audrey Zorik, Director of Kids Connection right here at Vallejo Drive Church. We want to welcome you to another Kids Connection program. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. And if this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program. And if you are a regular, we want to welcome you back. It's so good to have you worshiping with us today. Now, every Sabbath we get together, we talk, we have different topics, we sing different songs, we learn different things about God. And, that, and today, we have something very special for you, as always. Now, to get this program started, I'm going to invite you to stand up. Let's sing our song of the day. It's a very happy song. You guys know this song because we sang this song before, right here at Kids Connection. Let's get our Kids Connection program started. Sing with us. Wow, that was a fun and exciting song, wasn't it? Oh my goodness, I can sing this song all day. It's such an energetic song. Don't forget to come back during the week and check on our website down below where we're going to post this song for you so you can come back and keep listening to this song all week because there's a whole lot of change coming your way. Great. If you just sang that song with us, now I invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus and invite him to be a part of our program today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day here at Kids Connection. We ask that you be with us today as we worship your name. Be with every child that are participating and are watching and mom and dad that are watching with them at home. Protect them, keep them safe as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now we're going to listen to our story of the missionaries and we're going to participate of our offering together. However, before we go there, I want to share something with you. You know that kid has been coming out and kid is visiting some kids throughout the week, right? Okay. Well, I'm excited to let you know that kid is going to visit two more kids this afternoon okay so kids you know who sent us an email earlier this week and who contacted us for kids to come by and visit you 
So get ready. There's one child right here in Glendale, and there's another child in L.A. Actually, three kids in L.A. We're coming to visit you this afternoon. And to, excuse me, next Sabbath, we're going to show you a videos and pictures of the kids that we went to visit right here on our Kids Connection program. Now, last week and every week, we've been hearing about stories where the missionaries and what we are sending our money to support and what our money is supporting in other places of the world, right? Like last week, we learned about Spain. Well, today we're going to take another trip, another place in the world. Pay attention and let's watch our missionary stop story today. When doctors told Resta he had type 2 diabetes, he didn't know exactly what to do. He was immediately put on three medications and none of them seemed to help. Eventually, Resta visited a nearby Adventist healthcare clinic. At the clinic, they taught me how to change my lifestyle, and since then, I don't take any medication. I eat a vegan diet, and I work out a lot. Resta's health transformation inspired him to attend the Adventist University in Hungary to get certified in lifestyle consultation. Because I have diabetes, I really want to help other people with this disease. That's my motivation. Today, Resta is the coordinator of a global mission urban center of influence in Debrecen, the second largest city in Hungary. This center provides a number of services, including assault room, therapeutic massage, medical advice for asthma and lung problems, and grief and addiction counseling. From the first moment they come here, we tell them everything is based on Christianity. Our base is the Bible. The Christian care and professional services visitors receive encourage them to return for other programs. We are very lucky because God gave us six doctors who are church members and also more than 10 members who are working in the healthcare field. I think it's a good opportunity for us to help people and work together for people. I think it's a very important place because in church we can treat the spiritual health of people. And here, we can treat the body and give them advice about the body. I think this place is like a bridge between the people of the city and the church. This urban center of influence started through total member involvement when Anna Maria decided to open a small bookstore where people could relax, socialize, and browse faith-based books. People don't have proper connections with each other. They are just rushing all the time. We were trying to reach out to those people who didn't have proper and pure connections with others. We wanted to pray with them and for them. Through this ministry, several people have come to know Jesus. Well, I heard. There's a woman who had several problems and came into the store. I was able to recommend some books and support. We talked, and I invited her to church, and she became a church member. It was like a miracle how much of a loving atmosphere there was. They were very kind to me. They offered for me to sit down and talk with them. I'm very thankful for this center, and I'm thankful I can share my new beliefs and love with others. Another way Adventists spread love is through their annual event called Reach Out with Flowers. Each year, one of the church members grows thousands of daffodils on his land and donates them for all the church members to give out freely in the community. Many people ask why we do this. The answer is simple. Just because we want to show love and be a blessing to people in the city. Adventists and Debrecen are trying to connect with people in creative ways. Whether it's through medical services or partnering in city events, they want to be involved in the community. Please pray that their outreach efforts continue to spread the love of Jesus to the people of this large city. Thank you for supporting Global Mission, which supports projects like these in cities around the world. So good to see where our offerings are going and what people are doing to share the love of Jesus in other places of the world. Thank you so much for supporting the missionaries with your story by clicking on the link just above here and ask your mom and dad to donate to the missionaries. Thank you so much. Now, 
Today, I'm excited because as every now and then I do something different and we always participate and have different activities, right? Well, today, I'm going to invite my daughters, Lanessa and Larissa, to come out here. Come on up. Hello. Awesome. So, uh, today, we are they don't know what we're going to do yet. And I'm going to ask you guys at home to try to do this the same way. Okay? So, right here, I have a roll of toilet paper. Why do we have a toilet paper right here? And if you guys have an actual toilet paper at home, I invite you to, after the program, or you can do this with us, you're more than welcome to, ask mom and dad to stand up and you're gonna do something fun right now, okay? So I'm gonna hand you this toilet paper. Go ahead and unwrap it. Here we go. Unwrap the toilet paper. All right, you can get rid of this. Here we go. Now, this toilet paper, what I want you two to do between this side and this side, I am not going to move. I'm gonna stay right here like a statue and you are going to wrap me with that toilet paper. Are you ready? You think it's gonna be fun? I think it's gonna be fun, absolutely. So here we go, they didn't know I was gonna ask them to do that. So here we go, get that toilet paper ready, open up, it's a brand new toilet paper. All right, so between the two of you, do whatever you want and wrap me as much as you as you want, okay? So um, better so the kids can see it, it's like from here up. All right, ready, here we go, all right. Are you done? Oh, you're gonna tuck it in on the back. Okay, how do I look, boys and girls? How is this? I'm gonna turn around so you can see the back. There's the back. Make sure I'm not gonna fall. Here's the front. How is this? You think I can? Oh, this one. Oh, you're right here. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> here comes part two of my, our experiment and in, in our, our um, little activity here. Now what I want you to do, both of you, you still have the rest of the toilet paper in your hand, right? Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to grab the end of the toilet paper where you tucked it in the back. Okay, you disconnected it, great. Now I want you to roll the entire roll of toilet paper back to its original form. So try the best you can to roll the toilet paper back into the roll as fast as you can. Okay, 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 that's the deal, that's the deal. I'll spin, you roll, I'll spin, you roll. I'm getting dizzy. Are we there, are we there? Are we all rep? All right. So, this is what the toilet paper roll look like after they try to put it back together. It actually does like a ball from a distance. Look at this, it looks like a, a ball. You can't really see what it is. But, anyways, good job, good try. This is what happened. I'm gonna explain it to you what happened here. And I wanna see if you can do it at home. Are you able to wrap someone with toilet paper or paper towel and then retrieve that paper and put it back to its form without ripping or trying to keep it as a toilet paper and not a ball? Yeah, okay. As fast as you can, absolutely. So I wanna hear from you. 
Try to do this at home. Take pictures, take a video, send it to us, ddkidsconnection at gmail.com. I want to hear, I want to see what happened with your experiment. And I'm going to explain, explain to you what this has to do with our lesson of the day. Good job, girls. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Now, I'm going to ask, uh, uh, actually, let's see if I can do a setup right here. I'm going to bring something from this side, something from this side. And I'm going to uh, raise a little table here. Okay, so our second activity of today, and what I want to share with you guys is this. I want to ask you boys and girls at home. Here I have a jar of water. It's clear water. Here's my little mixing stick. There you go. It's just water. And here I have three coloring food. They are red, green, and yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix two colors into the water and I want you boys and girls to guess what this is, okay? What color is going to turn, the water is going to turn. So I'm going to get the red one and I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of red and I'm going to go with one, two, three, oops, four drops of yellow. Now, what color do you think this is going to turn to be? Ready? My mixing stick. And there you go. What color is this? It is orange. If you guessed orange, you are absolutely correct. Good job. Now, uh, let's see, I'm gonna make another mix. So here we go. I'm gonna get a little bit of red. Where's red, here it comes. Where's red? And I'm gonna do one, two, three drops of red. And I'm gonna go with one, two, three drops of yellow. Here we go. All right, my mixture is done. Now we have what color? Orange again. Hmm. We have orange again. All right, fine. Let's try something else. I'm going to get the uh, red and I'm going to go with one, two, three drops of red and I'm going to add, aha, this is this got to make a difference now and I'm going to add one, two, three drops of the yellow. So aha, for sure now this is going to work. My mixing stick and here it comes. Wait a second. What color is this? Huh? It is orange again. I can't believe it. I mix red and yellow, red and yellow, red and yellow. It was three times and I keep getting orange. Why am I still getting orange? Tell me why. I know you know. Huh? Could it be because I am mixing the same colors over and over again? <gasps> I think that's what it was. Now, if I wanted to get a different color than orange, what did I have to do? Oh, I had to mix green. But I didn't see the green because it was hiding behind the jar. I was only able to get the red and the orange, excuse me, and the yellow. And when you mix red and yellow, you get the color orange. But because I did the same thing over and over again, I kept getting the same results. 
Hmm. Okay. What does this have to do with our lesson today? Well, I'm going to tell you. In our Bible study today, in our lesson, in your classroom, you're going to hear a story about some people in the past, from the Bible time. And what happened is that they were doing something that they couldn't reverse it. Do you remember the roll of, pa of toilet paper? Did you see what they did? Were they able to put the toilet paper back to its original format, original roll? No, they couldn't. So these people did something that they could not reverse it. And they kept doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And every time they did that, something happened. You know, boys and girls, sometimes we do the same thing, don't we? We keep doing the same thing and we keep asking for forgiveness and we keep doing the same thing again. Hmm. I wonder what the people from the Bible had to do different. Well, we're about to find out what they had to do different and what they were doing that couldn't be undone because their actions could not be undone and they had we have to think about what we do just like the toilet paper and once you do it we have to be careful because once we do it certain things cannot be undone so pay attention to our story today and as we learn what happened to the people but before we go to our story i'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day one more time there's a whole lot of change coming your way. Let's sing together. There's a whole lot of change coming your way. Cause like it or not, nothing stays the same. So hold on tight and follow real close. God is good and he's in control. Great, 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 awesome, amazing song that we sang together. This was great. And I want to thank you, boys and girls, for singing along, for being a part of our Kids Connection program. Let's go ahead and close our program with a word of prayer. And then I have something else that I want to share with you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, 
thank you so much because we believe in you that you can help us. We believe that there are changes that we need to make. Help us to learn from our story today about the things that we need to do in our lives and in, in, in every day. And uh, as we continue to worship, we ask for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Terrific. I had a lot of fun being a toilet paper mummy <laughs> right here and doing the experiment of the colors that we kept adding the same colors and getting the same result over and over again. I'm looking forward to see what your teacher is going to teach us today in our lesson. Now, I want to tell you uh, something else. I want to talk to you about something else today. This week, this past week now, all over the place, we've had kids, we've had teenagers, we've had young adults, we've had older people that all got something done together. And that is, they graduated. Well, some of them had a graduation. Others graduated from school. If you are not in school yet, it's okay. Don't worry. Very soon you're going to be in school. But today we're going to tell we're going to talk about a lot of kids. Some of the kids graduated from first grade to second grade, from second to third, from third to fourth, from fourth to fifth, from fifth to sixth, and in seventh and eighth. And if you were in kindergarten and you finish your kindergarten this week we celebrated your graduation. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you. I received some information from the parents that their, their children graduated, that you graduated from kindergarten. Others graduated from eighth grade. Some people graduated from high school. And I want to congratulate every one of you. This is, this is a, a, an achievement that you deserve to celebrate. And I'm so happy that you um, got to this point. And I want to ask that God blesses you as you take the next step, as you continue your life from now on. Well, we have something special prepared for you at, at our worship service today at 11 o'clock. Okay? So watch our 11 o'clock worship service. We're, we're going to mention some of the names that graduated. And if you don't see your name or if you don't see someone that you want to recognize, send us an email send us their picture we want to show their picture in our program so send it to the church Vallejo at Grace and or you can send it to the kids kids connection uh, program which is VD kids connection at gmail.com this afternoon kids coming out if kid has not been to your house yet to say hello to you from a distance send us an email ask mom and dad VD kids connection at gmail.com Send us your name, your phone number, your address, and we are coming out. I'm going to drive Kid to come out and say hi to you at your house. Thank you so much for watching our Kids Connection program today. God bless you. God keeps you safe. Very soon, we're hoping to have you all here so we can worship God together in the name of Jesus. Until then, until next week, I will see you. Be safe. I love you guys. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining. See you next week. Bye-bye. Happy Sabbath. I'm Teacher Kelly, and I want to welcome Elia to Sabbath School today. Great to have you with us. I want to focus on our blessings. Can you guys send me your videos of what you're doing out there that's a blessing? We have so many of them. We have this blessing tower. I want to see your videos. You can send your videos to me through texts or you can contact the church office and they'll make sure to get the videos to me so we can put up your blessings. What are you doing that is so great for the world, for your health? My family and I filled up our vegetable bed and we planted vegetables. So planting a garden was a blessing for us. So we planted tomatoes, zucchini, cucumber, we got cauliflower, red cabbage, some lettuce, and we have our grapevine over there.
you know, it was something fun to do. It was a break from all the mental anxiety and we're gonna get something out of it. And we can share with others too. So what are you guys doing? We would love to share them. Also a blessing is that we prayed for Amy Bell last week and she's doing better. So that's wonderful news. The biggest blessing of all we all have is our love from Jesus Christ. And we have some more prayer requests on our board. These are prayers we wanna focus on all week long. So we have on our list, Sabbath School families. We miss you guys and we know you're struggling and suffering from being separated. We still wanna pray for everybody who's affected by the COVID-19 virus, which is all of us, but those who are sick, we definitely want special, special prayers for them. And a new one on our board is equality. We wanna pray that every single person of every single color is treated the same. Nobody is better than anybody else. And we want to continue to pray for our church as the Sabbath School Ministries, especially the children's ministry, is under great attack. And we want to pray that our children's ministries will continue to flourish. And we want to pray for peace because without equality, we can't have peace. And we wanna to continue to pray for the frontline workers who are dealing with the coronavirus. And we also wanna make sure that as the country's opening back up and there's more large gatherings, that the coronavirus isn't going to come back and do more damage. So we wanna to meet together again soon and we're trying so hard to get there. Mr. Knights is going to pray for us. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your Sabbath. We thank you for our families and we thank you for our church. As we're about to go through the Sabbath day, we thank you in advance for all the blessings that you have in store for us. At this time, there's a lot of uncertainty and unrest in, the, in our country, dear Lord. We pray that you send your, your spirit, your comforting spirit, and your spirit of love to all of us and to everyone around the country. And please help us to know that you are in control and that you will take care of us. Continue to be with us all. Bless our church, bless our children. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're gonna play a game, what comes next? I'm gonna show you a picture and you're gonna yell out, what comes next? Next. So here's Dylan holding a bat. What do you think should come next? That's right. He's going to swing at the ball. Okay, now here's Cody hitting the ball with a bat. What comes next after he hits the ball? No. Oh. That's right, he runs to the base. Now in this game of playing catch, what comes next? And then what do you do after you catch the ball? What comes next? So this activity about what comes next is connecting us to the story about the Israelites' disobedience to God. You think that every time they did something wrong, they would know what would come next, but they didn't. They didn't realize that trouble followed their disobedience to God. Do you guys remember all the amazing miracles God did for Moses' people? Let's think. He parted the Red Sea. He sent food from heaven. He kept the people safe from snake bites. He sent a pillar of fire at night to keep them warm. He sent a cloud cover during the day to keep them cool.
they were thirsty and God miraculously had water come out of a rock. Remember? The people didn't remember. They kept forgetting. They kept choosing to worship idols instead of the one true God who kept saving them. They could have had a short trip from Egypt to the promised land that God was trying to lead them to, but they kept disobeying. Thanks to Jax, Janie, and Jade for showing us another connection story. Go left. Go right. Go out the door. You can't go anywhere when you keep going in circles. You need God to lead you. The Israelites kept going in circles. They were stuck in the wilderness for 40 years because of their disobedience. You can't get anywhere without God's leading. We're gonna see how disobedience leads to trouble. So finally, the time came when they were about to enter the promised land and Moses died. Joshua was gonna lead the people into the promised land, what they had grown up waiting for their whole entire life. The people learned to trust God and they knew he would do what he said he would do and give them the land. Joshua was a good leader and led the Israelites to victory in many battles to take the promised land. God promised if they would obey him, he would help them win all of their battles. The Israelites followed and served God. As their leader, Joshua instructed the people to keep God's rules and to serve the great God who led them out of slavery from Egypt and did all of those amazing miracles to keep them safe. The people served God all the days of Joshua, but then Joshua, their great leader, died. After Joshua died, the Israelites began to make bad choices again. They continued to disobey God's commandments, especially the first commandment to love only God and to not worship any other gods because only the true God can truly save us. God's rules are always meant to protect us and to guide us the right way, just like the Israelites. The Israelites had taken the promised land as their own. Some of the Canaanites were left in the, the land given to the Israelites. And the Israelites stopped obeying God's commands. They started to follow the Canaanites. And they also started to worship false gods and idols made of silver or gold. But then... The Israelites did it again. The Canaanites did many sinful things that God told the Israelites not to do. But the Israelites stopped turning to God and they decided to follow the Canaanites. They started to follow false gods again because that was what the rest of the world was doing. Trouble came to the Israelites. They soon found out the Canaanites and the other people who lived in the land were not their friends. They began attacking the Israelites, stealing their food and fighting against them. God let these people win against the Israelites because the Israelites were not following God. If they wanted to go their own way, God would let them. The Canaanites started to attack the Israelites. Here the Israelites are trying to be like the Canaanites and then the Canaanites turn on them and just attack them. They should have listened to God. They should have let him lead. The Israelites were greatly troubled and realized they cannot do this on their own. They can only have help from the one true God. So they called out to God. Do you know what it means to repent? 
To repent is to say, I'm sorry for going against you, God. I'm sorry I worshiped this idol. I'm sorry I made a mistake and married a Canaanite when you told me not to. So God had mercy on them, like he always does, and sent for another judge to deliver them from their enemies. The people would serve God while the judge led them, but would eventually turn against God with their disobedience again. Over and over, the Israelites continued that cycle, like the circle going nowhere. It's going in circles and it would never end. How is it going to get to the star? It won't. Oh! It's in an endless loop for eternity. Yay! <laughs> We already know our God is a merciful and loving God, so he forgave the Israelites. There's a book called Judges in the Bible, and it's one of my favorite books because it has favorite stories in there, like the story of Gideon and how he defeated this great army with very few men. And I love the story of Samson. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible, and they're in Judges. Judges was a series of judges who ruled the land without a king because God wanted to be the leader. Because the people need God to be their leader. We need God today to be our leader in everyday choices. We have to remember this verse from Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. It tells us, But you are a forgiving God. You are kind and full of mercy and do not become angry quickly. And you have great love. So you did not leave them. God did not leave the Israelites. And God has not left us. But we have to remember to call on God first. Jesus on the cross definitely shows God's love and forgiveness for every single one of us. So let's remember that disobedience equals trouble. Repentance equals forgiveness. God forgives us and we are free. We always have to remember to choose God. Even after another mistake, God will always forgive us. What do we do when we keep getting it wrong? We read the Bible. First John 1 John 1.9 tells us, if we confess our sins, meaning we repent, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins through Jesus on the cross. It has already been done for us. And purify us from all unrighteousness because through Jesus' blood, we are cleansed, we are purified, we have been forgiven. But we have to keep asking. When our disobedience is causing us into trouble, we gotta repent and go the right way. Not being stuck in a circle. For the craft today, we're gonna to make one of those directional signs. So I have three toilet paper rolls taped together. And if you have a paper towel roll, that would probably work well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some strips of paper out, preferably cardstock, cause it's a little bit thicker and it will stick a little bit better for our arrows. So how you make an arrow is you're going to take your strip of paper and you're going to fold it in half. And then you're just going to snip diagonally up in the corner here. And then you're just going to have your arrow, which is pointing the direction. And then we're going to write our verse on here and tape them all up. So I have a few strips of paper cut out, and so I am going to start writing my application verse, which is one of the ones we read from Nehemiah 9.17, which is the second part of the first 17. So I am going to start to write them on my strips of paper. Okay, so I wrote Nehemiah 9.17b, which is the second part of the text. It says, but you are a forgiving God gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. You did not leave them. When the Israelites left God, God was always there when they asked for him and when they repented. So that's the text, Nehemiah 9, 17b, which means it's a big verse and they cut it in half. 
but you can use as many strips as paper as you want to. And we're going to put it, our directional sign, you're gonna tape it on there. One going one way, one going another way. You know, with the directions, the arrow's going all around. They're not going in circles, right? We're actually getting somewhere when God is leading. Sometimes we may make the wrong choice thinking we made the right one with all good intentions, but God's always gonna be there for us. Even when we make the wrong choices, we just have to keep allowing him to lead. And the sign goes this way. I'm gonna put it down here a little bit so you can see the top of the post. And this can be in our room to remind us that sometimes we go the wrong way. God is always there for us. We gotta do our best to be obedient to God where he goes. And there we go. We got our directional sign. And if you actually have a garden stake outside and you might have some paint stick stirrers, you can always paint those and make a real sign. That'd be a fun project. So let's ask God this week to help us go with his obedience. Let's live a life in obedience of him. And you know a great place to practice is by obeying your parents. Before we go, we want to invite you to attend our June 14th business meeting at 10 a.m. via Zoom. You'll get the information through an email, and we would really like to have your support and votes to save our children's ministries. Okay, go in peace, go in God's obedience, and go love each other.